Heyo, uh, making rare public remarks amid all of this. We'll dip in uh, live momentarily. Also ahead, more on our breaking story today that the United States has dropped this Moab bomb, uh, also known as the mother of all bombs, on these ISIS tunnels in Afghanistan. Uh, why hasn't this bomb ever been used? It was apparently made during the Iraq war. Why has it never been used until this point? We're following all the breaking details. You're watching CNN. and the executive branch have provided to us, consistent with our American ideals. We do these things because it's our job. It's what we signed up to do. It's what our president needs. And if we didn't have a tough time justifying our budget to the American taxpayers, that too would be inappropriate. As the CEO of a security research firm recently noted, the CIA appears to be, CIA appears to be doing exactly what we pay them to do, exploit specific targets with limited attacks to support America's national interests. Now our mission is simple in concept, yet incredibly difficult in practice. I've seen that in just the few short weeks. We work to provide the best information possible to the president and his administration so they can advance our national interests and protect our country. It's a mission that the CIA has carried out for years, quietly and effectively. Our accomplishments often remain classified and secret, but a few special ones are known to the world. The CIA was a crucial player in the global campaign against nuclear proliferation and continues to be today. We helped unravel the nuclear smuggling network used by AQ Khan, assisted in exposing a covert nuclear facility in Syria, and gathered intelligence with the help of partners that persuaded Libya to abandon its nuclear program. We've also been on the cutting edge of technological innovation throughout our history. The CIA-led efforts to develop the U-2 aircraft and orbiting satellites, endeavors that allowed us to surveil activities in rival states that were closed to us. We've pushed the boundaries of the possible in ways that have benefited both security and the welfare of the American public. More recently, CIA investment in technology venture in 2003 led to the development of what we know today as Google Earth. My first few months on the job have only reaffirmed for me that this innovative spirit and can-do attitude are much alive and well. So now I'd like to talk about what the CIA does not do. We're a foreign intelligence agency. We focus on collecting information about foreign governments, foreign terrorist organizations, and the like, not Americans. A number of specific rules keep us centered on that mission and protect the privacy of our fellow Americans. To take just one important example, CIA is legally prohibited from spying on people through electronic surveillance in the United States. We're not tapping anyone's phone in my hometown of Wichita. Now, I know there'll always be skeptics, and we need to build trust with them. But I also know firsthand, from what I saw as a member of a Congressional Oversight Committee, and from what, from what I see now as the director, that CIA takes its legal restrictions and responsibilities with the utmost seriousness. We have stringent regulations and engage in robust Office of the General Counsel and an empowered independent Office of Inspector General to make sure of that. Moreover, regardless of what you see on the silver screen, we do not pursue covert action on a whim and without the approval or accountability. There's a comprehensive process that starts with the president and consists of many levels of legal and policy review. Let me assure you, when it comes to covert action, there is oversight and accountability every step of the way. And I inherited an agency that has deep respect for the rule of law and the Constitution. It's embedded in the very fiber of the people that work at the CIA. And despite fictional depictions meant to sell books or box office tickets, we are not an untethered or rogue agency. And so while we've had some truly, office, excuse me, some truly awesome capabilities at our disposal, our offers do not operate in areas or against targets that are rightfully and legally off limits. At our core, we're an organization committed to uncovering the truth and getting it right. We devote ourselves to protecting our trade. We work hard to maintain truly global coverage. We spend hours upon hours collecting information and poring over data and reports. And we also admit when we make a mistake. In fact, because CIA is accountable to a free and open society, we help defend. The times in which we have failed to live up to high standards of our fellow citizens have been cataloged well over the years, even by our own government. These mistakes are public. They're public to an extent that I doubt any other nation could ever match. But it's always our intention and our duty to get it right. And that's one of the reasons we at CIA find the celebration of entities like WikiLeaks to be both perplexing and deeply troubling. 
Because while we do our best to quietly collect information on those who pose very real threats to our country, individuals such as Julian Assange and Edward Snowden seek to use that information to make a name for themselves. As long as they make a splash, they care nothing about the lives they put at risk or the damage they cause to national security. WikiLeaks walks like a hostile intelligence service and talks like a hostile intelligence service. It has encouraged its followers to find jobs at the CIA in order to obtain intelligence. It directed Chelsea Manning in her theft of specific secret information. It overwhelmingly focuses on the United States while seeking support from any democratic countries and organizations. It's time to call out WikiLeaks for what it really is, a non-state hostile intelligence service often abetted by state actors like Russia. In January of this year, our intelligence community determined that Russian military intelligence, the GRU, had used WikiLeaks to release data of U.S. victims that the GRU had obtained through cyber operations against the Democratic National Committee. And the report also found that Russia's primary propaganda outlet, RT, has actively collaborated with WikiLeaks. Now, for those of you who read the editorial page of the Washington Post, and I have a feeling many of you do, yesterday you would have seen a piece of sophistry penned by Mr. Assange. You would have read a convoluted mass of words wherein Assange compares himself to Thomas Jefferson, Dwight Eisenhower, and the Pulitzer Prize winning work of legitimate news organizations such as the New York Times and the Washington Post. Assange claims to harbor an overwhelming admiration for both America and the idea of America. But I assure you, this man knows nothing of America and our ideals. He knows nothing of our third president, whose clarion call for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness continue to inspire us and in the world. And he knows nothing of our 34th president, a hero from my very own Kansas, who helped liberate Europe from fascists and guided America through the early years of the Cold War. No, I'm quite confident that had Assange been around in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, he would have found himself on the wrong side of history. We know this because Assange and his ilk make common cause with dictators today. Yes, they try unsuccessfully to cloak themselves and their actions in the language of liberty, language of liberty and privacy, but in reality, they champion nothing but their own celebrity. Their currency is clickbait. Their moral compass non-existent. Their mission personal self-aggrandizement through destruction of Western values. They do not care about the causes of the people they claim to represent. If they did, they would focus instead on autocratic regimes in this world that actually suppress free speech and dissent. Instead, they chose choose to exploit the legitimate secrets of democratic governments, which has, so far, proven to be a much safer approach than provoking a tyrant. Clearly, these individuals are not especially burdened by conscience. We know this, for example, because Assange has been more than cavalier in disclosing the personal information of scores of innocent citizens around the globe. We know this because the damage they have done to the security and safety of the free world is tangible. The examples are numerous. When Snowden absconded to the comfortable clutches of Russian intelligence, his treachery directly harmed a wide range of U.S. intelligence and military operations. Despite what he claims, he was no whistleblower. True whistleblowers use well-established and discreet processes in place, in, the, in place to voice grievances. They do not put American lives at risk. In fact, a colleague of ours at the National uh, Security Agency recently explained that more than 1,000 foreign targets, people, groups, and organizations, more than 1,000 of them tried to change how they communicated. All right, we're going to keep an eye on this. Uh, Mike Pompeo, the uh, CIA director, speaking publicly there uh, in Washington. We're keeping an eye on it, but we're going to take a quick break and get back to our breaking news on this mother of all bombs that was apparently just dropped in this one particular province on ISIS tunnels in Afghanistan. Uh, coming up, we'll talk to the Afghan ambassador to the United States next.